The Soul is a compact car that has been a staple in Kia's lineup since 2008. In 2019, the Soul hit its third generation and here in 2023, the Soul has a nice facelift. We're gonna go through it all and give this thing a proper review. But before we dive into the review, I'll just go ahead and say that throughout the years, I've driven many Kia Souls. And every time I drive one, I really enjoy them. There's not much else that an average car buyer needs over this right here when it comes to just getting back and forth. But Kia definitely gives this some soul, which makes it not just an appliance. We'll dive into all of those thoughts as we go. But first, let's talk about the trims offered here in 2023. And for 2023, we get a more simplified lineup. We get an LX, an S, an ES, and the GT line, which is what we're driving here. And that means the X line and the turbo trims have both been discontinued, but have been rolled into other trims. Kia also offers a Soul EV, which I haven't driven. Should be pretty good based on the driving of this thing, but we're not really diving into that at all. We're looking at this, which is the 2023 Kia Soul GT line. And if you know anything about Kia's other lineups, they have a GT line and a GT. The GT line is more about looks. The GT is the ones that gets a lot more performance. So this is more about looks. They don't really have a performance arm of the sole, which wouldn't make sense anyways. Let's go ahead and dive into the exterior and see what's updated for 2023. So Kia has added some notable design enhancements for 2023. Plus you get some new colors. This color is Neptune blue. Also on the GT line, we do have dual tone paints, which this one obviously isn't. Up front is that predominant Kia grille. We do have slimmer headlights and the translucent piece behind the Kia badge. And I did have a few people ask me if this was the EV because it doesn't look like it has a predominant grill. A lot of it looks covered, but this is not. That is the grill for the gas engine. On the GT line, we have the fog lights. We got those LED headlights. They all look really good. We also have body colored side mirrors there with integrated turn signal. The new sole comes with either 17 or 18 inch alloy wheels. Here on the GT line, we do have the 18 inch alloy wheels and they look really good on this thing. Along the rear, you do have refreshed LED taillights, your sole badge and your GT badge. And of course, overall, it is a more boxy look for a car. Again, it's been the staple of the sole design. This one is a little bit more rounded looking, but definitely in keeping with the heritage of the sole design. As far as dimensions go, your total length is 165.2 inches. Width is 70.9 inches, height is 63.0 inches, and your total wheelbase is 102.4 inches. So yeah, definitely lives up to that compact car name on the outside, while the interior is much more spacious. But before we jump inside, let's go ahead and take a look at the hatch. And one of the big things Kia touts with the Soul is that although this is a car platform, you do get SUV-like storage. So it is a hatch and there's a ton of space back here. It does have 24.2 cubic feet of cargo volume behind the second row. And that's more than uh, Kia Telluride. Folding those seats down, you're looking at 62.1 cubic feet total. And we do have a shelf system. So you got a shelf up here. We've got this thing full, but there's also a pull up extra cargo area down there and we got a big subwoofer back here in the back other than that there's not a ton else to see back here so let's go ahead and pop the hood and check out the engine all right like i said there are no performance improvements for the gt line all of the gas powered kia souls come with this two liter four cylinder engine that produces 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 132 pound feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. And you do get a CVT throughout the lineup as well. No manual options. And although it's not much of an engine, this isn't much of a car to be pushing around. So it does really well. We'll talk more about that as we drive it. But first let's jump inside and start taking a look at the interior. All right, 
I wanted to specifically jump here in the rear seats first to let you know that they're a good size for a compact vehicle, especially because of the profile of the vehicle. I have plenty of headroom. I'm 6'1", obviously a bit of a bigger guy. I fit comfortably, plenty of knee room, plenty of foot room, and again, plenty of headroom here. These rear seats are nice as well, nicely cushioned. You do have a pull down armrest here with cup holders. You also get two USB type C charging ports back here, but that's about all the amenities. Let's go ahead and jump into the front. All right, guys, we're here in the interior of the Kia Soul GT line, and it's a nice interior. Let me uh, give you a look around. So first off, we do have a combination of a black leather with red stitching and black cloth here. You do get some cool red accents along the speaker grill here, and there is LED lights in there that do glow, and uh, they kind of bounce with the bass of music. Pretty cool, not really as distracting as it sounds. You also get this cool red trim piece here that has the cool pattern in it. It's a nice way to break up a otherwise boring surface and add a little bit of character into the vehicle. Also do like the placement of the tweeters here. And moving right along, we do have a 10.25 inch touchscreen display with Kia's infotainment system, which I do like a lot. If you've seen any of my Kia reviews before, ever since they upgraded to this, I really like it. Very responsive. You also do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built in, and it does work off of the USB type A plug, but not the USB type C plug. But you do have both down here, USB type A and C. We also have a shelf here for a wireless phone charger. We do have a push button start, a traditional gear lever here. Put it into reverse, we do have a backup camera. No 360 camera, but this thing is small enough and good enough visibility. You don't need one. Below the screen, you've got some physical buttons here. You also have physical buttons for your AC and heat controls. We do have heated seats with your buttons right here and a button for your drive modes. Those drive modes consist of either a normal or a sport mode, no eco mode. Further back is your electronic parking brake and auto hold button, cup holders. Got a nice padded armrest here, decent console. Our steering wheel is leather wrapped. We do got a bit of a flat bottom. You got the GT line logo right here. And we have red stitching. Got all your controls that you would assume to have on a steering wheel. And behind the steering wheel is a full LCD driver information display. You can obviously toggle through a few different things here. And when you switch modes, as you saw, it does change colors. On the side of the steering wheel, you have an auto shut off off switch so it doesn't shut off automatically. We'll talk more about that as we drive. You've got a button to pull up your camera, traction control, and your illumination settings. We also do have a sunroof here in the GT line, but that's about it in the interior. Let's go ahead and get this thing out on the road and talk about how it drives. First thing to mention, the 147 horsepower out of that two liter engine is plenty for this thing there's not much to push around so it doesn't need a ton of power and that helps with fuel efficiency and just making it a smooth ride for day-to-day -day driving not even being in sport mode you can push it and get some good power you can switch it into sport mode and it's a bit more immediate but quite frankly i drove it the full week just in normal mode. It's a really solid feeling drive. It is a smaller wheelbase, so you feel those bumps a little bit more sometimes, but it's never really jarring. Throughout this week, I've had the opportunity to drive this here in the suburbs. I've been more out in the country with it. I've been downtown Dallas in the middle of the city with it. I've been up on the highway with it. In all situations, it succeeds just fine. There's no situation I put it in where I was like, ah, eh, this car doesn't fit here. It can fit anywhere. And that is a size pun because parking this thing is an absolute ease no matter where you are. Definitely one of the big benefits of having a compact vehicle like this, easy maneuverability, easy to park. 
day-to-day -day driving, this is a comfortable vehicle. The height of it means that even me as a 6'1 adult, I fit just fine in here. I'm comfortable in these seats. These GT line seats are a bit more bolstered than the standard seats and I think they feel just fine. The steering wheel, I really like the steering wheel in your hands. It's a bit beefy. You got the flat bottom, nice leather, definitely something they could have cheaped out on, but it feels really nice. You've got all your controls, easy to touch, easy to use here on the steering wheel, and everything else in the vehicle is easy to reach, easy to touch, easy to use. You do have Kia's safety suite in here, and this one is packed with everything, thanks to the technology package we have on this. So we get our lane keeping assist, our radar guided cruise control, our collision avoidance, all those really great safety features that every modern vehicle should have, and even in this price point, are definitely welcome options. Fuel economy for the Soul GT is rated at 28 miles per gallon city, 33 highway with a combined of 30 miles to the gallon. We've been averaging 25.6 miles to the gallon for the full week. I've had it for the full week, been driving it consistently all week, and it's at half of a tank, which for me in these loaner vehicles is really good. Of course, I do let it idle more while we're doing pictures and video throughout the week. I also try to push it and have a little bit of fun with it throughout the week. So that fuel economy number can definitely be better, but uh, that's what we ended up for the week. Again, overall, I just think this is a really good platform. Chassis feels good. Driving position feels good. Steering feels good. Responsiveness in the throttle and the steering is really good. It's really nothing to complain about. With that, uh, let's find a place to pull back over. We'll talk about the price and some of my final thoughts. Let's, let's get into it. So let's talk about the price really quick. The LX, the base trim starts at $19,890, which is a really good price. You're not gonna get a lot of the amenities that you get here in this GT line, but for a really good price, you get a really good vehicle. The GT line base is at $23,490, which again is still a really good price. This one that we're sitting in is 27220 which is closer to the more kind of average what a car buyer spends these days. I think the average is actually over $30,000, so still a good price. So on top of the GT line, we have the technology package for $2,400. That technology package gives us the forward collision avoidance assist with junction turning capability, the highway drive assist, the navigation-based smart cruise control, the electronic parking brake, the power driver's seat, the high gloss interior trim, LED headlights and taillights, that cargo cover, and the dual level cargo floor. All that is part of the technology package for 2,400 bucks. We also have carpeted floor mats for $135 and a $1,295 destination charge. And that's what gives us our total MSRP of $27,220. With that, let me jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts on the sole. All right, and after another full week of driving another Kia Soul, I have basically the same opinion that I have every time driving one. I really like the vehicle. It is a small compact vehicle. It's not for everyone obviously, but for a lot of people, this is just a fantastic option. Whether you're palling around in a downtown city area, getting up on a highway is just fine with this, living with it out in the country, just fine. As a suburb commuter, it's just fine. And I did get the opportunity to tackle all of those during the week of driving this thing. I really like the design improvements that they've made, and just overall, it's a solid platform. Again, not for everybody, but definitely good for a lot of people. So if you're even halfway considering it, I would definitely say get a test drive in one and give it a chance. With that, I hope you did enjoy the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up button on the video. To let me know you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We do a different review every week. Also go check out TXGarage.com for more written reviews as well as event news coverage over there. And with that, guys, thanks for watching.